Next we want to talk about measuring the heat and this is called calorimetry. The simplest form of calorimetry is just a coffee cup, a polystyrene cup with the lid on it. If you put a thermometer through the lid you can measure the temperature of most likely going to be water that your reaction is carried out in. This is an example of an experiment carried out at constant external pressure. So when we measure the heat we're calculating Q at constant pressure so we're also measuring the change in enthalpy. Picture a reaction between an acid and a base. So the acid and the base that is the system we're interested in studying. Everything else is the surroundings and part of the surroundings is just the water that we're carrying out this reaction in. The thermometer measures the temperature of the water. When we combine the acid in the base, this reaction produces heat. And so in terms of the chemical system, the acid in the base, the system releases heat. Q will be a negative number. But in terms of the surroundings, the water absorbs that heat, and the Q term will be a positive number. There are a few formulas to calculate this Q. Heat is equal to the mass times the specific heat, capital C, times the change in temperature. That's one version of the equation. The other is very similar, but instead of grams, it has n, the number of moles. And so the heat capacity will be on a per mole basis rather than a per gram basis. The third way is at constant volume, which is called the bomb calorimeter. So it's a, unlike a sample of water inside a polystyrene cup, this time the system can't change its volume and so the formula is just the heat capacity of the calorimeter times the change in temperature. We're going to focus on these first two ways of calculating the heat. So here's a typical problem. We have 35 grams of copper that's heated to some unknown temperature. We add it to a certain mass of water that we measured the temperature is 25 degrees. The hot copper is going to cause the water to increase up to 28.6 degrees. And from this, we can calculate how hot the initial copper must have been. The heat capacities are constants that you can look up in tables. For example, liquid water is 4.18 joules per gram per degree Celsius. That means it requires 4.18 joules to heat up one gram of water by one degree, which is a much larger heat capacity than solid copper. Solid copper, to raise its temperature of one gram by one degree, is only 0.385 joules. The very high specific heat of water means it requires a large input of joules to raise the temperature of water. If we added the same number of joules to the copper and the water, the copper would get much hotter than the water. Now to solve this problem, we have to make an assumption. And the assumption is that none of the heat is lost. In reality, the hot piece of copper is going to be heating up the air around it before we dump it in the water, but if we make this assumption, we know that the copper is losing heat. That process is exothermic, or Q is a negative number. The water absorbs the heat, it's endothermic, and Q for the water will be a positive number. Assuming no heat loss means Whatever the negative is for the copper, it's equal and opposite to Q for the water. So if we focus just on the water, we can calculate Q for the water using the formula M times C times delta T. The mass of the water was 345 grams. 
heat capacity, specific heat capacity, 4.18 joules per gram degree Celsius. And the change in temperature of the water, it ended at 28.6 and it started at 25 degrees. So Q for the water is 5,191.56 joules. We can use that because we know Q for the copper is negative of Q for the water. So we know Q for the copper must be negative 5191.56 joules. And then we can write the mass of the copper, the specific heat of the copper, and the change in temperature of the copper. So we're using the same formula that we used for the water, but this time we're applying it to the copper. The mass of the copper was known in the problem to be 35 grams. The specific heat capacity, 0 0.385. And the only thing we don't know is delta T for the copper. So we can solve this equation for delta T, and that'll get us one step closer to calculating what the initial temperature of the water was. And delta T works out to be negative 385.3 degrees Celsius. And remember, delta T is final temperature minus the initial temperature. We don't know what the initial temperature of that hot copper was, but we do know the final temperature because the copper is going to continue to transfer heat to the colder water until they both reach the same temperature, 28.6. So the final temperature of the copper was 28.6 degrees Celsius. So if we solve this equation for the initial temperature, we'll get that the initial temperature of the copper was about 414 degrees Celsius.